thrilled I am that you asked me to speak uh, about Bruce. I'm thrilled to be here. At my age, I'm thrilled to be anywhere. <laughs> this occasion for me um, is both easy and difficult. Difficult, of course, because Bruce himself is not here. Easy because in this eulogy or tribute, call it whatever you wish, you don't have to lie. You don't have to gild the lily. You don't have to say something about the person who's passed that really wasn't true, but makes him sound better than he was. In Bruce's case, an extraordinary life. In his business, the business he loved, show business, radio and television, he was one of the best. As a man away from the microphone and the camera, he was one of the nicest people you could meet. Eccentric, but in such a, a loving way. But the one thing I know he'd be very pleased about, um, I don't wear my hairpiece all that often, but I'm wearing it today because it used to intrigue Bruce. <laughs> he'd say, you can't even see the joy in this. <laughs> And when we were appearing on Good Morning Australia, then it was after the show one day, we, uh, we had a cup of coffee or something, uh, which we did every Thursday when he was on the show. And he said, do you do me a favour? And I said, yeah. He said, I'd love to try you here. <laughs> and a uh, little coffee shop where we were sitting, I said, well, well, we'll have to go back to the studios to do that. I wouldn't like to do it here in the coffee shop. He said, okay, so, and I thought he'd say, well, I won't bother doing it. I said, no, I'd love to. So back, back we went. And he tried it on. Well, knowing Bruce, of course, you know, you would realise what he did. He put it on back and tried. And he looked like a pensioner. Big, very strange. But he, he told Patty on one occasion, he said, the one thing about Bruce that I'm jealous of is, I'd love to have his hair piece. <laughs> yeah, have a look at the man himself. And let me tell you, my hair piece could do no good for him because as he is there, and as you see on the screen, you, you, you realise that that handsome man still has the devil in his eye and a wonderful sense of humour. And that's what he was. Two, I mentioned before that I called Jill Googie. I, I think she looks so much like Ruby Withers, that wonderful actress. And to Jill, this man here was her Clark Gable. He was a, a very special man. I met him for the first time. I knew his father, actually, before I met Bruce. But when I met him, he was a late teenager, I'd say 17 or 18. So that would mean at the time I would have been, I don't know, 26, uh, 27. And he was mad keen to get into radio. And he said to me, it's a story I told on Nightline last Monday uh, with uh, Philip and, and Simon. Uh, he said, what's your philosophy about radio and television? And I thought to myself, I haven't really got a philosophy about radio <laughs> and television. But I said, I think you've got to lead a double life. And he looked at me strangely. And he said, what do you mean? Do radio in the morning and rock banks in the afternoon? <laughs> I said, no, you've got to have a professional life and a personal life. Let them intertwine, but make sure there was a dead set middle. Now, I'm not egotistical enough to think that he took my advice. But that was Bruce. He had this great professional life with one of the best voices that we've ever been lucky enough to, to hear, and he knew how to use it, and he had a personal life which was just the most family-minded life that I've ever come across. His love for Jill and his children and those beautiful eight grandchildren was something to inspire everybody. And that's what he had. He had the ability to be a wonderful husband, Father, uh, a wonderful grandfather, which has been exposed this afternoon with the 
with the kids on stage. And that was separate to what he did for a living. And yet, there was that second family, and that family is represented this afternoon. In his last 20 years or so, he was a family member of a huge family for both Nightline and Remember When. And I've been around a fair while, and I've seen a lot of famous and much-loved people who pass on then be mourned by the people who love them. But I, I doubt very much if I had seen before the amount of people touched by his passing.